So I'm just putting together a quick run through of the gear I'm going to take with us on the trip to uh, shoot videos. So for phone I'm going to take a Samsung Galaxy E6 because it can shoot 4K video. So I'm going to swap over to that now um, so I can run through my proper camera gear. I start at this end and work across, go through each bit. So I've got a pretty heavy duty tripod. I probably could use a lighter weight one but the thing with this tripod is it's got a, um, a fluid head both in pan and tilt. I think I'll probably use that more out when it's windy, that's why I've got why it's so heavy. I mean, I think it does weigh five kilograms, um, but it is a it is a, technically a travel video, like a professional level travel video tripod. Um, I'm in two minds about taking this one, this, the, the, the one that's this big at the minute, but um, I think I probably will need it. Uh, I'm also debating on whether to not to take stabiliser. Um, so this stabilises the my big camera's footage uh, by hand so it'll be good for doing stuff in cities and things but obviously you can't use it out and, out and about on the motorbike um, but it's cool you can do some arty shots with it so I probably will, if I've got space I'll definitely take that um, over here I've got my camera bag for my DSLR so this is what I shoot all of our uh, vlogging footage on that's not on head cams so it's a Lumix G7 shoots 4k video um, I think it's only an 18 megapixel still camera, but it's still good enough to take good uh, still photos. I use a Rode mic. Um, the reason why I use this specific Rode mic is it doesn't use a battery to power the microphone. Uh, the battery powered mics are probably better for sound quality, but the thing um, I've struggled with in the past is I just forget to turn them on, and this one just runs off the battery power uh, on the camera, and then you, know, you haven't got any problems with it. Um, not been turned on because a couple of times, well probably more than a couple of times, I've been videoing and then got home and realised I hadn't turned the microphone on that specific clip so um, that's why I've gone for that microphone. They're really expensive though, I mean you can get a pretty decent battery powered mic for about 20 quid but these I think are like £50 so it's, it's worth the investment to not lose any footage. Uh, at the minute these are the lenses I'm looking at taking, so on here currently I've got 7.5mm Samyang F 3.5 fisheye, uh, which is what I shoot most of our um, vlog footage in. Doesn't zoom, so and it doesn't have my image stabilization, so it's a bit hard work. But um, and also it's a fully manual lens, full aperture and focus, so it takes a bit of work to work with. Uh, this is the um, only this is the the 14 to 42 zoom lens that came with the camera. I'm in two minds at the minute about swapping this. And this lens for a Lumix 7mm to 14mm zoom lens at f4. Um, it'd be a bit of extra money, but it'll mean that both of the features of these lenses will be in the same lens. Which means, like, obviously, out in dusty terrain, like in the desert or um, just anywhere really that's outside, I won't have to change between these two lenses to get two taps of shot. I'll just be able to leave one lens on. For night time and for portraits, I've got a 25mm f1.7. Um, this is about 50mm focal length on a 35, 35mm camera, so that's a good portrait lens. Uh, no image stabilisation, but um, I'm probably make do with that at night for shooting video for out in city, cities at night. And uh, I don't know if I'll need it, but I've got this big old 200mm zoom um, Pentax lens that I've used for years. Got a tripod adapter to back make it stable. Um, there's no image stabilization because it's like it literally is a night early 80s zoom lens. And also on a micro four thirds camera, it's about 400 millimeter zoom, so it's savage zoom lens. Um, but I think I suspect for getting some really cinematic shots out in places like Mongolia and that, where I want to film the bikes from on on the on the tripod from quite far away, uh, this will be a real beast to use. So I've got two batteries there, one battery inside. Probably get some more. Got a little USB charger. I also have a, a wall charger, but I probably won't take that. I'll probably just maybe get another little USB charger. So all my SLR, DSLR gear, the camera and the lenses um, will go in this tank bag, which is a Givy um, six litre tank bag. And the reason why I got this one is, even though it's quite small, is it's IP6 rated for waterproof. So, I mean, it will literally take somebody spraying it with a um, a jet washer, um, so 
that should keep everything nice and dry. I, I suspect if you look at the seal and everything, that even this would survive a rollover in a river or something and protect everything as long as it was zipped up properly. Um, so that's why I'm using that. In here, I've obviously just got chargers and um, filters. So like, you know, um, neutral density filters, spare batteries for the head cams, polarizers, etc. Usual stuff. I'm taking two computers, which seems excessive. This is uh, the editing beast. So as you can see, I'm exporting a video at the minute. This is a 15.6 inch Lenovo IdeaPad. I can't charge this off the bike. We can't charge any laptops, normal laptops off the bikes because of the power requirements. The bikes only have a 280 watt alternator. So um, these can only be used um, when we're in hotels or wherever we can find a, a, a wall socket. So for when we want to just work in the tent, or you know we're at, we're camping out, and we want to we need to write blogs or we need to do our um, online work, uh, we're taking two of these little tiny EEPC things, so we can um, wire up our phones to them, get internet, and just do general purpose work like emails and web work. And these only consume 35 watts, so should charge quite happily off the um, vehicle batteries. This is our drone, so this is a DJI Spark. Uh, it's a fly more combo, so you get two batteries and a remote control. Having flown at drones from just a phone, you can't rely on it, it's useless. It's alright for a little small park, but you, you can't trust it when you're trying to shoot um, stuff high up and in wide open places where you want to get a really long a long follow shot or something. So, um, has its own remote control. You can plug a phone into the you well you have to uh, plug a phone in the bottom so you pull these out, slot the phone in and it gives you a video feed from the drone so you can control the angle of the camera and everything. Um, the drone is tiny if you see that's my hand. Uh, it's got a little gimbal so it's really stable footage. Again two batteries, this is a little tiny, you can see the size of the case it goes in. Um, all of that except the controller and obviously the charger go in this case so it's really compact. Uh, these are um, neutral density filters, uh, they're just so you can customise the look of the footage, keep a nice bit of motion blur and it'll help deal with um, really bright backlit areas and just help me get the best footage from the drone as I can. The drone's only 1080p even though we shoot our videos in 4k and the reason for that is mainly just cost. T to get a DJI Mavic which is the 4k drone, uh, which is quite a bit bigger even though, but it does fold and fit in the same bag, same size bag. Uh, it, was, it would have been double the price, f over double the price for the for the kit, and and also if we lose it, we will have lost quite a bit of money, but not in comparison to to that the Mavic Pro or something like that. And also we only use the footage the the drone for three to five second establishing shots, so upscaling 1080p to 4K, it's not a big deal. So yeah, that was the rundown of the gear. I hope we'll be able to make some good videos with it. I will swap out some of the bits, like I'm looking at swapping maybe a lens, and I'll think about the tripod, but that's, as it stands, that is the uh, the media kit. 